Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuhu. This is Empowerment Technologies, Grade 11, and this is your Module 5, which is Development of ICT Project for Social Change. So we have been talking about this project since Module 2. So supposedly, nakapasa na kayo ng advocacy plan ninyo, and then you have already started building a website for that advocacy plan. So in this module, we are going to talk about different phases included in development of the ICT project. So the performance task for this module is your website. You should be able to have already built your website. So after going through this module, you are expected to develop a working prototype of an ICT project for social change. Now again, it depends upon you kung saan nyo gagawin ang inyong ICT project. You may utilize Jimdo, you may utilize Blogspot, you may utilize WordPress, or you may also use Facebook page. Kung doon kayo comfortable or doon kayo familiar, you can also use those platforms. So, ICT project development process. What are the processes involved in the development of an ICT project? So, we have different phases. These phases, if you're using different references or searching on different websites, Baka iba-iba yung pangalan ng phases. But these are the phases that we have for this module. First is planning. Next is analysis and requirement definition phase. Design phase. Testing phase. Implementation and monitoring. And then maintenance phase. So planning phase. This phase involves conceptualizing the project, determining the goals, and analyzing the information available. You have to identify the problem or issue that can be addressed. So technically, the planning phase of your ICT project already began on module 2. Conceptualize a project that can be a solution to the chosen problem or issue. That is why the advocacy plan that you have created was based on a local or regional issue or problem that you feel like it needs a social change or social advocacy plan. Okay. Next, we have the analysis and requirement definition phase. This phase focuses on analyzing the function project requirements, target users, and impact of the proposed project. Dito nyo na i-specify lahat, or hindi naman sa lahat, but most of the requirements that you will be expecting as an output in your website. So for example, dito nyo i-specify anong platform ang gagamitin ninyo. Are you going to use blog? Facebook page ba? Is it going to be on YouTube? Are you going to use SlideShare or maybe Prezi? Because you can use those platforms as well. Then who are your target audience? Sino ang inyong mga users? For example, you have to specify their age range, their gender, their occupation, and if they are students, then maybe specific grade levels, you know? So you have to specify those things. And also, if you are in a team, you have to assign work or roles to your teammates. However, for this case, since we are online, it's quite difficult to have a team kasi marami naman yung magre-reklamo sa akin na teach, ako lang naman yung nagtatrabaho or teach, wala namang ginagawa yung teammates ko. So we actually assigned this project as an individual project. However, you can still ask your classmates anong ginawa ninyo or you can still collaborate. You can just tell me ano yung plano ninyo so that we can uh, adjust different things, okay? Also, assign schedules or deadlines, identify possible stakeholders or sponsors. If you really are quite serious about the advocacy plan, then again, we have mentioned before that you can work with your uh, local government units or yung uh, mga tao sa barangay ninyo to promote your website or your advocacy plan, okay? So next, content development and design phase. So this phase describes the architectural phase of an ICT project. The desired features and operation in detail, process diagrams, and documentation are contained within this stage. So in this part, you will have to tell me or you will have to put in your documentation kung ano yung mga articles na gagawin ninyo or anong klaseng content ba ang ilalagay ninyo sa website ninyo. It might be a simple article, you know, a simple essay or a simple information about your mission perhaps, your vision, or your goals. And then maybe content, like for example, if you have a courseware, if you have lessons there, or maybe blogs, or vlogs, or maybe podcasts, depende. And then you have to also create your videos at this time. You can incorporate already made videos that are available in YouTube, but make sure you do not plagiarize things, okay? So ibig sabihin, i-embed mo yung videos doon, make sure to ask permission to the original authors, to the original content creators, so that hindi ikayo makasuhan or hindi kayo makapiright infringement, okay? And for example, if you really want to create your own content as well, then you can have video or audio content. You have to film those. And that one requires scheduling, okay? So 
In this part, design phase, you also have to create the layout, the theme, overall design, ano ba yung shapes na gagamitin mo, ano ba yung colors na gagamitin mo, ano bang animations ang gagamitin mo, are you going to use those things, and all other elements that can be incorporated onto your website. Also, copywriting. So, for embedding videos, guys, you have to put in the links, but if it's embedded, there is really a link uh, to the original video, so that is okay. But if you are going to copy something from other people, make sure that you are going to put in the original link, okay? Para hindi kayo makasuhan or para, you know, nothing about uh, copyright infringement ang mangyari sa inyo, okay? Next, we have testing phase. So, this phase involves testing the results or the performance of every phase before it. So, you have to... Kailangan na nating i um, ilabas or i-publish ang inyong mga prototypes and let's see if you have users or if you have uh, audience that comes to your website and maybe watches your videos or maybe comments on your posts depende again kung ano ang theme ng inyong advocacy plan okay so in this stage you have to make sure that your website is working so for example of course ang isasubmit niyo naman sa akin is a link di ba so i have to click on the link and i and that link should be able to route me to your website. So, tapat yung link na yun ay working and I should be seeing a working website as well. So, make sure all links within your website are working. If, for example, naglagay kayo ng mga links dyan, like for example, you are you want your audience to go to a specific website, so you put in links. So, dapat lahat ng links na yun ay working. Tama man? Okay? And then, make sure that your videos are actually playable. Or, uh, make sure as well na merong buttons dyan or options sa inyong mga videos wherein the users can rewind, can fast forward, or maybe pause or replay the videos, okay? The same as your audio content as well. And then, check for picture qualities and other media quality. Like, for example, kung meron kayong mga gishare dyan na files or documents, and if you don't want them to be downloadable or if you want them to be downloadable, then make sure that all of those things are appropriate and necessary. Again, no, mahihirapan tayo kung tayo ay mag-share ng mga bagay na hindi correct or haram. So, kailangan tiningnan na natin yung mga content na yun. And if you are going to share coursewares or lessons, make sure again that the lessons are correct and they are actually informative and beneficial. So, next we have implementation and monitoring phase. So, this phase encompasses the actual rollout and release of the project to be used by the users. So, publish na talaga ang inyong mga websites. In huge ICT projects, so they have system administrators. And during the implementation and monitoring phase, trabaho ng mga system administrators ang um, everything that manages the entire website. Okay? In this phase, you also have to promote your website because, of course, the target users or the audience will not be able to know that your website is up kung hindi mo siya ipapromote. So, you have to put links of your website onto social media platforms, perhaps, like, for example, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, those type of platforms, okay? And then, make sure to monitor the progress of the website. Like, for example, if you have users that put in comments or left feedbacks on your posts, then you can respond, no? Para naman may interaction within the content creator and the users. It will create a, a better relationship. Most probably, babalik ang users sa website mo because of that interaction, okay? So, check reactions, comments, and hashtags to see if your advocacy is effective because that was essentially the point of creating the website. You have an advocacy that you wanted to be a solution to a specific problem, okay? Last but not least is the maintenance phase, and this phase comprises the correction, modification, and updating for improvement of the project. Responding to user feedback is also a part of this maintenance. So you have to check if yung mga links ba na nilagay mo dyan, pag-click ng mga users, available pa yung page. Because sometimes, hindi mo kasi alam no, kung ano yung uh, plan or ano yung mga ginagawa ng mga websites, ng ibang websites, I should say. Sometimes, may ginagamit ka na links and then apparently, that page or that website is taken down. So, pag-click ng mga users mo sa link na yun, page 404 na siya, no? <laughs> Error 404 na, page cannot be found. So, so, you have to check that your links are all good and are working. Also, video availability. Sometimes kasi, yung mga ginagamit nating videos, 
at the time na inimbed mo siya sa iyong website, it is still available. But the next time, somehow, we don't know the reason, yung original content creator, ginagawa niyang unlisted or maybe private yung video. So that's why, even if it's there, no, naka-embed siya sa iyong website, it cannot be played. Okay? Also, you have to check um, your audio content and other things, all of the things in your website. And then check articles and content, modify or edit them if necessary. For example, um, at the time of your write, uh, writing the article, apparently tama pa yung information. But then later on, you know, somehow maybe meron nang nag-iba or it was proven to be false, then you have to edit that part. Okay, you have to critically look at the content that you are sharing and then make sure that you also try and correct things or information that you shared if they are proven to be false, okay? And then regular updates or content uploads. Again, before, actually in the planning phase, kailangan nilagay mo na doon kung how many times or how often are you going to upload a content, okay? Like for example, is it weekly? Is it daily? <laughs> is it monthly? Is it, you know, is it every two months or something like that? No? Depende again yan sa iyo as the content creator. And then responding to user feedbacks. Again, we have said already that it left a good impression if you are responding to the user because it creates that interaction. Okay? And aside from that, maybe kasi talaga merong tanong yung user na kailangang sagutin or kailangang i-clarify towards your advocacy perhaps or towards other things. So, it is very good if you respond to your users. Okay, now you have your ICT project plan. So, ito yung ipapasa ninyo aside from the website or the link to your website, you have to create a documentation of your ICT project plan. And this is the content. So, number one, you have the project information or description. So, kailangan dyan nakalagay ang project title, yung type of project ninyo. Ano ba yan? Education uh, ba yan? Or training or health medical mission or art exhibit or anything that you think you would be able to pull off so that you can advocate your um, solution to a certain problem. And then, project proponents, depende kung meron kayo nito, but usually it is just the school perhaps. And then, project beneficiaries natin, sino ba yung gusto nating tulungan, urban poor ba, women, youth, uh, students perhaps, or out-of-school youth, depende, no? Date of implementation and duration, probably the entire second semester of this school year. Yun ang ilagay ninyo dyan, okay? Budget requirement, depende again yan sa inyo, okay? <laughs> Isali ninyo guys, kahit sabihin ninyo na gawa-gawa lang, or um, it's just a subject, ICT project, lagyan ninyo, okay? Because uh, the mere fact that you are going to use internet, and electricity and your gadgets. So, meron siya dapat budget requirement. And the next, we have project contacts. If you have, okay, if you have contacts with local government units or your SK or barangay, then put them on your project contacts. Next, you have the project background. You just have to explain why is this a problem? Why you have chosen that specific problem from your local or regional pool of problems? And then, why are you trying to solve this? And why is it that your advocacy will become a solution to that problem. Next, you have the project objectives. Specific objectives that you want to achieve by doing this activity or by doing this advocacy plan. And then, desired impact and outcome of the project. This is very specific now. Okay? Itong desired impact and outcome of the project. And then, risk management plan. If you don't have any idea how to create a risk management plan, then it is okay if you do not have this on your documentation. Next, we have project Organization and staffing. For example, kung nag-buy group kayo, pwede ninyong ilagay dyan yung mga uh, designated nila or mga assigned roles nila, yung responsibilities, yung contact person and contact details. But if you are doing it individually, then again, you can skip this part. Next, you have the work plan. This is the detailed schedule of your project. So, for example, sa planning phase, gusto mo ano ba yung mga activities dyan, maybe meeting, brainstorming, ganyan, ano yung output or target natin, probably yung section number one, di ba, yung project description, indicators, okay lang na hindi nyo nalagyan yan, person in charge, again, if you are working individually, then huwag nyo nang lagyan tong person in charge because everything is you. Resources needed, of course, ano ba yung kailangan mo dyan na part, and then cost, if there is, okay? Next, you have budget requirement. But then again, this might not be uh, as necessary in your project, but this is for your information only that real ICT project plan needs budget requirement, okay? And actually, in reality, ang mga ICT project plan, mahal. <laughs> maraming, maraming kailangan actually in a real ICT project plan. Like for example, if you're going to really put in a website, pagbayad mo pa lang sa hosting website na mag-host ng iyong, ng iyong website, no? So, 
mahal na yun. Like, for example, kung GoDaddy or Wix or WordPress. Although, WordPress ay, ano no, merong, ano dyan, libre. But, for example, if you're going to use Wix or GoDaddy, may mga subscription yan, no? Kasi, hindi mo ma-use yung full potential ng website nila or ng services nila kung yung free lang yung gagamitin mo. Okay? So, that in itself, meron na yun siyang kailangan na pera. So, dapat meron talagang budget requirement. Okay? And last but not least, other relevant information that is needed onto your project plan. And then your conclusion, a short summary that explains the potential value of your project. And then appendix, lahat ng involved or ng included sa iyong project na hindi mo na ilagay sa mga first parts, then dito mo siya ilagay. Like for example, pwede yung mga pictures or maybe screenshots ng pag-upload mo ng, ng, um, ng website mo or parts of your website. No, or maybe charts or graphs or reports or maybe feedbacks. No, gusto mo lang ipakita na meron talagang feedback or anything that is related to your website na wala sa mga first parts or hindi included sa mga first parts, then you can include it on 2D appendix. Okay? So, if there are any questions about your ICT project, so please um, post them on to our group chat or you can send me a private message. Okay? So, thank you so much for watching this video lesson. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ila ant. Astagfiru ka wa atubu ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.